This is a very personal video. It's the most vulnerable video I've ever made. And I'm going to talk about how I lost the majority of my life savings in a dating scam. The scam is called the pig butchering scam. And it's very much affected my 2023 and the last like three, four months of my life in a very profound way. And I'm ready to talk about it and share it with you. And I want to share it for a number of reasons, in part, because I think it's just really healthy and healing to tell the story. And I also want to let people know more about how this works so that if it comes up in your life that you can spot the signs and hopefully prevent it from happening to you. And if it has happened to you, I want you to know that you're not alone. I want to share some resources on what you can do, where to go to report it if this has happened to you, and also, you know, what I'm doing to help heal and recover in ways that my time massage teaching, my time massage practice has actually been invaluable in helping me. I want to be pretty brief about it, and I've actually got a substack, a new blog where I've written this story out in more detail, and there's a link down below, and if you want to become a subscriber and find out more about the story, then you can head over there as well. But what happened to me is it all started around the holidays. It started just after or before Christmas, I can't actually really remember. And I was on the Facebook dating app and, you know, I found this interesting looking woman and I liked her and she liked me and we started talking and we started getting to know each other and it was all through text. And I guess that's really the first red light. You know, she said the way, you know, I mean, she said she was local and, but she was away. She was going away, like really like the day or the day after that we started talking, going to LA to visit with her cousins. And that the way that she liked to get to know people is through texting first as a way of writing is a way, you know, her exact words were, this helps me to see into another person's soul is through writing. And, you know, it, it's very interesting because there's both an external part to this that the person who was able to convince me and build that trust with me is very, very good at what she does. I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's, you know, they, they are getting so much better at understanding the psychology of what people are attracted to and looking for and really speaking to that. But then there's also my internal reality and my own internal life. And so I was open to it. And I was open to it in part because I had a very loving long distance relationship for a couple of years during COVID. And I spent a lot of time getting to know that person. I mean, we did meet in person before we started our long distance relationship, but at the same time, a lot of our time together because of COVID was spent in a long distance and in a WhatsApp kind of relationship. We would share messages together all day. So, you know, I was curious and I was open. And, and so that's how things started. And we just started sending messages and getting to know each other that way. And I was, you know, she's Chinese and she had a way with words that was very poetic and very interesting way of expressing herself. And as someone who's into Eastern styles of massage and into healing in general, just getting to know her was very interesting. And she presented herself as someone who also had a very strong business background. So, you know, in the cadence and in the back and forth that was going on at the beginning, uh, when she told me that she had that business background, I just kind of let it out that, oh, well, maybe at some point you can help me to become a better investor because that's something I'm looking to become better at doing. So, you know, she didn't actually have to reel me in very hard because it truly was something that I was interested in. I managed to save some money over the last couple of years, especially as I was rebuilding from COVID and looking for a way or ways to invest. And I'd actually purchased a course a couple of months earlier and was planning to dig into that course, which was teaching me all about, you know, prudent ways of investing and building more of a nest egg, you know? So I just let it slip. And then a part of what was so, you know, deviously successful about her approach is that 
she didn't really say much about it until maybe two or three days later and then came back to me with it and basically said um, oh I, you know I remember you were into that investment idea and maybe I do have something to share with you and so she shared with me and what she shared with me was a uh, way of doing crypto trading through short-term trading so basically buying long or selling short and making trades that only last for you know a very short amount of time two minutes five minutes etc and then you see what kind of return you get in that amount of time and the way she said it and was explaining it to me was that right now was a really perfect time to invest because of the conditions in the market but it was only going to last for a little while and asked me if I was interested so you know um, and that wasn't the only thing that we were talking about. In fact, I would say it even at that time, it represented, you know, maybe 5% or 10% of our conversation was around finance or around investing. We were just getting to know each other and building up a connection or, you know, what certainly felt like a connection. And I said, sure. And essentially she showed me that what I would need to do in order to make this work is that, you know, to support the technology of doing the short and long tr trading like that, it's not something to do on like Coinbase or Bitcoin or whatever the other like major exchanges are. She showed me a specific exchange that I would need to sign up to and join and then we would transfer some money into that account and then see how it works. And so that's basically what we did and I also happened to have a little bit of experience trading so I had um, a, an exchange account already set with one of the bigger names and then from there it was really pretty simple to just set up the other account on another platform and transfer some money from point A to point B and she you know I had told her how much I had in that account and she said you know I really am concerned about your safety I don't want to do anything risky so let's just start with a small amount she suggested I take half of that and that we try and so that half was about thirty five hundred dollars and that's what I started with and essentially she would tell me exactly how much to trade and at the exact right moment because she had some kind of knowledge through her own knowledge of Bitcoin and she had on her computer you know basically connected to the Bitcoin network and she had a mentor and so you know this is all part of that backstory that I would say if you want to learn more about you can go to the, my blog and uh, explain it in more detail but that was basically it that she would tell me the amounts to trade and I would do it two minutes later I would get a return and it was amazing you know essentially every time that I did a trade I would it was working out and I would get like a 10% return in two minutes and so you know in about an hour's worth of setting this up and doing the trading my thirty five hundred dollars had become forty two hundred dollars or forty three hundred dollars and I was like wow I've never made money like this before and it's just felt like such a gift and she felt like such a gift and you know I was on cloud nine really and and that's how we ended it that night and she said that for her she does these kinds of trades for herself every you know two or three times a week and she was interested in sharing it with me in part because you know in getting to know each other she was excited about my career and having a family and what I would do with the money and she was someone who was looking for a student you know that she had amassed her wealth and had done really well for herself and now was very excited about sharing that and again as a teacher I could relate to that because I know that I've been gifted with a practice in Thai yoga massage and sharing that and finding people who are truly passionate about the work and being able to teach them and share it and see them flourish with it is one of the great gifts of my life. So like I said, you know, I, in a lot of ways internally, I happen to be a really good person to get excited and, and for her to really succeed at her at her job because I had things going on in my life I had stuff that had happened in my own past that made me pretty susceptible to it and I trusted her you know and so that first night was that much money 
and then we took the rest of the money from that crypto account and then you know within a few days essentially i had probably profited five or six thousand dollars and i'm just you know the decision was like do i go into i had other savings that i had been building over the period of years and do i take from that and invest it and see if i can turn it into something more and so i did and and um you know within three weeks i thought i had actually made about forty five thousand dollars and I was blown away because for me that is just life-changing wealth and prosperity and what I could do with that, you know, to help pay for my daughter's college, to help build my business, etc. And, you know, and so even if this was only going to go on for a couple more weeks, because as she said, it was a short-term thing, this was just a golden parachute, you know, that's what it felt like. And I was also, of course, very excited about her as a person and getting to start to build a life with this person so um, you know at this point I started telling other people and the first person I told you know was just genuinely excited for me and it just you know as I was saying I'm just like I have the craziest dating story for you you know and here's what's going on and then the second pr people I told they were equally excited but they were skeptical and you know truthfully I was skeptical as well it's not like I just completely bought into the you know, is this real? I tried to research it. I Googled things. I was checking out short-term and long-term trading. It all seemed like a thing and, and a thing that really, um, exists in the, in the world of investing. I attempted when I had only invested a small amount of my money into the exchange to see if I could, or really when I made that first investment to see if I could take money out. And I did a little test with a small amount and that worked for me as well. So you know, I didn't really suspect it until I had shared with the second set of friends what was going on. And it took a few minutes of them Googling and checking it out. And essentially that's where they pulled up the pig butchering scam, which essentially it was a description of exactly what was going on in this, you know, that you, you know, I mean, I don't want to repeat the whole story, but basically, you know, and I can post a link, I will post a link to that below where you can see it's exactly as it's described and you know the, the 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 i hate the image but it's true you know they build you up and build you up and then it's like they cut your head off you know and essentially that's it and then your whole life savings is gone in my case you know and your heart is broken and that's you know so once i found out about it i tried to extract a lot of money from that exchange and it didn't work and not only that, but the customer support on the other end basically said I had been flagged as a risk. And so to help make sure that I'm a real person, I would need to put in another $10,000 as a security deposit. That would be returned to me along with my money. So, you know, I wasn't going to fall for that at this point. And I tried to communicate, I was still in communication with the quote unquote woman who was you know, that I've been getting to know to see if maybe she could help me in some kind of way. Cause I'm like, well, this is kind of the only thing I th can think of to really get the money back. And so I'd asked her, you know, can you lend me the $10,000? And, you know, cause she had actually said that the same thing had happened to her and she got the money back and etc. So I'm like, okay, great. Well, you can lend me the money and then I'll put it in there and then I'll give you that money back. I'll even give you interest. I don't really care just as long as I can get my money back. But of course, you know, shortly thereafter, I didn't hear from her again. And this was my situation. And it was a real, you know, to say it was a shock to the heart, a shock to the system, it is almost underselling what it was like uh, when I first found out about this. And, uh, you know, so that was at the end of January. And here I'm making this video at the beginning of May. So we're about three and a half months into the healing and recovery phase and you know moving on into this next phase so you know the beginning thing for me was just the amount of shame and the amount of um pain that it all brought up was was overwhelming and it was just such a unique kind of pain i mean i've had my heart broken i've, I've had my father pass away you know i've dealt with death i've felt dealt with loss um, but this was so different, you know, this was a, a huge violation as well as, let's say, having my heart broken because I actually thought there was a real thing happening between me and this woman. 
um, not and, and you know just like what that money represented that I you know not necessarily the money that I had earned in interest but all the principal that you know is now gone um, puts me in such a precarious situation and it's also you know money that I'd spent literally years and years saving and now it was you know all of a sudden gone so um, what I wanted to do was very much like curl up into a ball and just kind of disappear and I guess that was my first uh, instinct and I also recognize you know from being a healer and being someone who's learned from a lot of loss that that's not necessarily going to serve me in the long run you know maybe it's going to serve me in the short run and it's not even a bad thing to do because when the pain is so overwhelming when the fear and everything else that's coming up feels so overwhelming you know I think I'm a I believe very much in it's important to find comfort in the discomfort or as I say comfort in uncomfortability but there's also only so much you can take and when you're in the first waves of it and literally waves are crashing into you and all around you then my process is to face it and face the fear and face the pain as to the highest degree that I can but also to be kind to myself and this is actually also what I'm writing about in this blog and what I'm sharing here is, you know, this is the story that happened to me, but I also, you know, it's an unfolding story. And part of my first feelings is as much as I wanted to curl up into a ball is that I recognize like, you know, it's the same binary choice I think that I've faced in other instances when my heart has been hurt and broken so much is, you know, do I, do I retreat and do I build up a wall and do I do I get skeptical and hate in my heart and towards the world or do I find a way to still stay open and essentially you know not let my spirit get broken and I'm choosing door number two you know I'm choosing healing methods and putting a foot forward every day to not let my spirit get broken and beyond that to let this be a force of good in my life and a force of good in the world and so here we are you know and for now what I would say is that you know the biggest signs I think to look out for number one is that if you meet someone and you're not able to talk to them in person or even you know on the phone we we really just stayed with the texting and then as she explained to me, she'd be coming back to San Francisco in about a month or middle of February and maybe six weeks because after she was in LA, she was going to visit her family, her mom who lived in Hong Kong, and then was taking a trip for a couple of weeks even further into Japan and to Finland. So she had this whole trip planned right as we were meeting. So she was coming back in February and that's as she explained it to me. We did exchange some audio messages, but we never even really spoke on the phone and so the first thing I would say is just that you know is to be very much on the lookout for if you're getting to meet someone and because of whatever their busy life or your busy life that may be going on is to have some boundaries until you're actually able to certainly speak to them and then uh, meet them in person before you allow trust to build too far down the road and certainly you know money and relationship mixing I mean that's the kind of thing that certainly in, in hindsight I would say is something that just shouldn't mix and if it is going to mix it happens months or years down the road once you're really much farther along in your relationship so <clears throat> these are the things those are the first things I would say to really look out for and how you can protect yourself from this happening to you if it has happened to you then you know there's a couple of resources and I'm posting them down below where you report it and so with the FBI they have a, a hot well, I guess a hotline a modern day hotline you know it's a website where you can go and report it and then there's also this nonprofit that I found out where you can report it and someone was in touch with me right away once I reported it but because of how much it was impacting me I was not able to report it you know the day after I reported it 
a few a couple weeks after and so by then they explained to me about well, by now your money is most likely gone even if you think you're in touch with this person within a couple of days once they realize they've taken as much from you as they can they'll take the money out in some kind of money laundering way so if this does happen to you then I would say you want to report it as soon as possible and get in touch with these people and maybe something can be done to help you recover your funds as well but if it has happened to you I also just want you to know you know that you're not alone and and building some community around this and and I have shared the story now you know publicly I'm making a video about it but I have written about it publicly and I've heard lots of different stories from people maybe not the exact same pig butchering but it amazes me how many people have been scammed and how how there's so many of us out there and it is true that we live in a world now which is so connected and so much opportunity for this kind of scamming exists in different ways and the technology is just getting better and better and people are learning the psychology of how to pull off these scams better and better so getting educated in in this way I actually you know this is a big part of why I'm making this video last thing is that I have started a GoFundMe as well and this is to help in the recovery phase as I build my life savings back but also with building my business and building new projects you know it's a very up and down world in this teaching of time massage and and sharing the healing uh, paths that I'm very interested in sharing and so if you feel motivated and you want to share this story and you want to contribute to my rebuilding fund then I have a link here as well and you can make a donation and uh, anything certainly matters and it's not just financial that matters in this you know I, I'm so grateful for you for being here for listening to my story and for for you you know and for your own practices and for whatever you can do to help protect you and share this story with other people just eternally grateful and if you want to keep learning about how I'm using the knowledge and the wisdom of the massage to help me I mean I will say very briefly that at the core of Thai massage as I've taught in so many of these videos is one sentence which is the secret to giving an amazing massage which really became the central focus of why I started my own school when these words came to me was how slow can you go and how high can you fly that the more that you're able to slow down the better your massage can be the more you become a skilled listener and come into relationship with yourself with your heart with your body and with their body and with their needs and you you listen then the massage gets better and better and better and for me that's been so central to my process and how I work with this intention to not let my spirit get broken it is to listen and it is to feel what's going on in me and not run away from it to breathe with it to meditate to take care of my body you know physically whether that's through yoga and eating good food and sometimes when I feel like I need to take my focus away because the pain is too much I will binge I will watch a show I will you know eat some kind of junk food or whatever it may be but I'm being very vigilant about that as well so that I can straddle that fine line of doing the short-term you know kind of comfort choices that are going to help me right now and then also doing the long-term choices that really help to release this pain and heal from it and learn from it and and build myself up so I can share it and I'm telling that story more and more on my blog and if you feel that that would be useful for you and good knowledge as you go forward in your life then again I would love for you to check out the link down below and if you have any comments and you have anything that you want to share with me um, I would love to hear it and I thank you thank you so much for listening and being part of this and that's my story thank you I'll talk to you soon